Hi, my name is Sarah. I am the webmaster for the Aggie Youth Group. So from year 2020 to 2021, whoop to that. And this is the presentation, Time for a Change. When it comes to sustainability, there are actually three branches of sustainability or three pillars of sustainability. We have environmental, the obvious one, social, making sure everyone's happy and living cool with each other, and economic, making sure that your dollar goes as far as you can throw it. Uh, these uh, pillars, just like a fun little tidbit, were written by a man called John Elkington, who was actually wrote them for businesses. He was a business author and a capitalist. He was very intrigued in how um, sustainability can be mixed with capitalism and work hand in hand together, which is great and goes right into our topic about budgeting. Today, we'll be talking about financial sustainability, economic sustainability, whatever you wanna call it. We'll be going over budgeting and how it affects you, the activities that you can do to save money both on campus and off campus, uh, and the resources that a and offers here that you can, I can help you save a buck or two. So, budgeting, what is it? I feel like everyone's got a pretty rough definition of budgeting, but budgeting doesn't mean suppressing your wants, uh, your desire to spend money. Budgeting is just putting aside a certain amount of funds or planning how you're going to allocate your limited income. It's choosing how much of it's going to go into savings, how much is going to go into an emergency fund, and how much you're going to be willing to spend. Uh, there's many ways to balance the budget is what they call it. The old way is to have a piece of graph paper and write it out then. The slightly more modern way is to have an Excel spreadsheet. You'll find big businesses do this. And if you have a lot of money, I would recommend you have an Excel spreadsheet. But if you're like me and you simply don't need that, phone apps are a perfect way to budget your, uh, budget your income. Uh, the two offered here on this presentation are Mint and Clarity Money which I have heard many good things about. I personally use the budgeting app built into my credit card. It, uh, the Discover credit card allows you to like watch where your money is going. And I've seen it with a couple other credit cards. I do use Capital One and like even the um, debit cards like USA will use it. So I recommend looking at what you might already have as far as budgeting. <clears throat> now, how do you budget? I mentioned before that it's usually good to put your money into like three different funds. Uh, the main one is spending. This is extremely fluid money, money that you can go out and just immediately turn into a crowd and you can immediately spend it. I use it in the form of a credit card. I've heard some people um, will budget by putting, by like having a certain amount of cash in their wallet and when the cash is done, they are tied with their spending money. I've heard multiple things like that. So you're, that's your spending fund. The second most important one is an emergency fund. This is a semi-liquid account, which simply means you can't spend it like you can a credit card. You will have to move around money. It's going to be a little bit harder to access that money, but it's safe. <laughs> There's no risk towards a semi-fluid account. It's recommended that you keep at least a couple hundred. Some people will put aside um, two months worth of a like rent and food into an emergency fund just in case, you know, anything happens. The last and I think most important when it comes to long term is a savings account. When I said uh, spending and emergency funds go from uh, liquid to semi-liquid, a savings account should be relatively not liquid. It mentions actually here that uh, it mentions compounding interest, right? Those and non-liquid accounts go hand in hand. If you actually want an account that compounds interest onto your um, money, they're not going to be fluid accounts. These saving accounts, these like 401ks or um, 401, yeah, 401ks or uh, mutual funds and things like that, they're very hard to take your money out of, but they will make you money. The, the idea of them is that you just keep putting money into them whenever you can, whenever you get a spare penny, just keep putting it in and putting it in. And over time, you will have this compounded interest making you money, hopefully at a rate higher than inflation, which is on average like 2.5 to 3. Those are a very, very complicated way to budget. If you are actually looking at setting up a proper savings account, I recommend you go talk to the financial advisors here at a and which I will move on to later in this presentation. A little bit more simpler way to budget is to just simply put aside money. 
it says right here, don't separate, don't, sorry, don't have an unrealistic budget, separate your needs and wants. Put that spending money that you have and plan out where it's going to go. Plan out how much money you're going to use is just like feel good money versus how much money you're going to put towards rent or food or et cetera. But how can you save your money on campus? I'm sure this is a lot more interesting to a lot more people. The biggest one is the uh, so-called latte effect. Uh, this first example here, eating out less, the idea that um, you spend a lot of money on these items that bring you only a small amount of satisfaction or a very limited amount of satisfaction for a relatively big price tag. It's called the latte effect because of the idea that you can spend $5 a week on a latte, but if you put aside that $5 every week that you spend on a latte, you could go and buy an espresso maker over time and just make your own lattes for significantly cheaper. It's uh, the idea that these lattes, they don't satisfy you for the $5 that they're worth. So eat out less is a great way to save money. Uh, the food that you like, man, go out and buy groceries and cook this food that you're probably gonna go out and eat. I learned how to make a mean fried rice and now I don't go out and buy Chinese food anymore. Stuff like that. For my on-campus people, y'all got meal plans, which are a double-edged sword. If you're a freshman, they required you to go and buy those like um, meal trades. It's actually, it actually says right there, don't buy more meal trades than you can use, but if, if you're not a freshman, don't even buy meal trades. They're such a waste of money. My meal plan when I lived on campus, each of my meal trades cost $10. And my favorite place to spend them was like Revs or Panda, where I was trading a $10 meal trade for a $6 meal. They don't give freshmen the options for full dining dollar plans, but sophomores and up get that option. So, you know, for my older people, I recommend y'all do those dining dollar um, meal plans versus meal trades. Limit the meal trades. Use the dining dollars as much as possible. Uh, when it comes to college, I'm sure most of y'all know this, but borrow instead of buy food, or borrow instead of buy like tools or books. I mean, textbooks are a pretty good example of this, hence the picture here, because let's face it, they never change. Please just buy them used. I feel like most of y'all know to buy this stuff used, but Things like clothes are actually one where it comes a little less obvious to buy them used. You should probably go and thrift your clothes, buy all that stuff secondhand, buy it used instead of like buying it brand new. I know this is borrow, but secondhand can go hand in hand with that, right? Like I feel like, yeah, that's great. Um, but buy secondhand things. I, most of my decorations are secondhand or gifts. Most of my kitchen supplies are secondhand. None of this stuff should be bought new. Hmm. The second point, uh, since this is 2020, who knows how relevant this is, but hey, and I used to have like a lot of really cool public events, and for my old people, you already know that, for my freshmen, y'all never got to experience that, and I am so sorry. I remember when they used to have like a movie once a month, and you could go with your friends, or they would have like cool little seminars that were usually very enjoyable. And like different things you could do around campus, like leech, uh, the leech teaching gardens had like yoga classes every Wednesday morning. Like, why would you pay for yoga if we have free yoga in the park? It was actually really cool. Like, and they say often have free food. There's this old saying that you should never buy food on Howdy Week. If you have to buy food, you're doing it wrong because there were so many events that had so many, so much free food. So this advice will be helpful in another time. So another great way to save money is the obvious, get a reusable water bottle. For my, my buddies on campus, why do y'all buy water bottles? You guys have those purified water filters outside almost every hall, or I mean built into almost every hall at Texas A&M. I literally do not know why you would buy water bottles. Get a reusable one. Stop buying these like disposable water bottles. You're wasting so much money. Sustainability and like, I mean, like environmental sustainability and economic sustainability go hand in hand. Stop throwing away water bottles. Stop it. Buy a reusable one, man. You're wasting so much money. And when it comes to like transport, use the buses. I know there's like a lot of rules over them these days, but wear your mask, use hand sanitizer, be safe. Please still just use the buses instead of your car because your car is expensive. And if you don't like people, ride your bike. I know if you need to go like 
anywhere off campus. There's bus lines that go all around Bryan College Station, not just uh, Texas A&M. Like, I think line 27 from the Trigon will bring you to ATV if you need to do grocery shopping. So one of the many ways to save money is to get these little coupon apps. I personally have never used Pocket Points or Hooked. They use coupon quite a bit. I like, I'll use them to like make dates cheaper because I don't know about y'all, but college is a great time to go on dates. And if you want to afford some really cool dates, you go on Groupon. That's, that's how you do it. There's a lot of resources on campus on like Texas A&M that you can like use to help you. I personally have used Money Education Center and the Veteran Services and they are both top notch. For the Veteran Services, I actually found out that I had free tuition as a dependent of a veteran and we had already used up our GI Bill. Turns out I had free tuition laying around. Talk to them. If you have anyone who has any military blood in your family, right? The Money Education Center is a little more practical for more people. They're actually just like full-time financial advisors that you're allowed to go talk to at any given moment. They're used to students coming in and asking about loans, how to pay off loans and how loans work, especially how these college loan works, or sorry, these like school loans work because they are very different than most loans, believe it or not. But they're also really good at helping you at managing the money that you already have. I was, um, I went and I talked with the Money Education Center because I didn't know a lot of terms. I didn't know how to like build up money. I didn't know how to find accounts of compounding interest that you learn how to calculate, but Lord knows you never know where to find them. I went and talked with these financial advisors and they actually put me on the path towards making money out of the money that I had sitting around. So I recommend you go talk to them. The longer that you let your money sit, the more money you lose. You lose about 2% just from inflation alone every year. So. Don't lose 2% of your money. Put that in a compounding account, especially if you're not spending it. Like, please do that. Usually there's an m, &M activity, but given that this is uh, on YouTube, uh, grab some m ms do some budgeting with them. Practice, with, um, <clears throat> practice by just allocating aside m ms for the cost of certain items. Don't really, yeah, see? So they had like little examples of this presentation was a little bit outdated. This is when we used to do stuff in the halls, and now we're on YouTube, so who knows what's happening anymore. I do want to recommend that you guys go talk to a financial advisor about how to use your money. A lot of college students are very afraid of credit cards or long-term compounding interest accounts or even just investing. The word investing carries a lot of weight that a lot of people are too intimidated to try or to even start. You have a hundred dollars sitting around that you earned as extra from work. And I know this is, this differs greatly with a lot of people, but if you have a hundred dollars, have it make money for you. Go talk to someone, talk to the financial advisors here at a &M. They can help you. Thank you. This is uh, Sarah Kelly, and this is Time for a Change, the budgeting presentation. Thank you so much. Let's see if I can figure out how to stop sharing it. That's the question. Ah, there we go.